In the last module, we're taking a look at how to get to position from the velocity using the antiderivative. Uh, we learned that from our fundamental definition, the position is the antiderivative of the velocity. Now you can represent that uh, any mathematical way you like, given terms, and so here's sort of how we represent that in uh, one dimension. Here's a vector representation of uh, the notation by what we mean by the uh, antiderivative. And so we can use that then if we know the velocity function in one dimensions or as a vector to be able to get the position function. Now if we have the acceleration we can get to the velocity exactly the same way because the velocity is the antiderivative of acceleration. Now since mathematically this is exactly the same as we did in the last module, we'll just do an example and then move on to something else. There isn't uh, anything particularly new uh, about this process. It's now just acceleration and velocity instead of velocity and position. Okay, so let's say we have an x component of the acceleration that is a function of time. It's equal to 10 minus 2t plus e to the minus t over 4. Okay, I can't imagine any physical system that would have this acceleration, so I just sort of made that up. So the first thing we want to do then is, is we want to uh, find the antiderivative of this for the velocity, and to do that I need the antiderivative of each of those terms. So the antiderivative of 10 is 10t with respect to time, of course. The antiderivative of uh, t squared of negative 2t is minus t squared. And then the antiderivative of e to the negative uh, t over 4 is equal to minus 4 e to the minus t over 4. And then I can quick check to make sure I differentiate each of these in my mind to make sure I reproduce my acceleration and uh, that all looks right. I need this minus 4 so that when I differentiate it, the negative 1 over 4 cancels those and I get my positive 1 back for my acceleration. And again, there's an integration constant that I have to add to the derivative. And we determine that integration constant by initial conditions. It's not arbitrary. It has real physical meaning. And so we, we can define our initial velocity to be v naught. That is equal to the x component of our velocity at t is equal to 0. If I put in 0 into this expression, that's 0, 0. Uh, 0 here gives me e to the 0, which is 1. So that's minus 4 plus c. Solving for c, c is equal to v naught plus 4. So that gives me now my uh, entire function. Velocity is a function of time which is equal to 4 plus v naught plus 10t minus t squared minus 4e to the minus t over 4. All right. So just for practice, since we have the uh, velocity, let's go ahead and calculate the trajectory. To do that, now I need the anti derivative of this, and that means I need the antiderivative of each of those five terms, and that's fine. It gives us practice now with our calculus coming up with antiderivatives. So the antiderivative of 4 is 4t, v naught is v naught t, 10t is 5t squared, right? So when I differentiate t squared, the 2 t comes down and gives me 10. And so then minus uh, one-third t cubed, the antiderivative of t squared. And now 
uh, the antiderivative of this gives me another minus 4 here in front, so that's plus 16 e to the minus t over 4 plus, again, our ever-present integration constant, which we can solve for by defining initial position, which we call x0, which is equal to x at t is equal to 0. If I plug in t is equal to 0, I get 0, 0, 0, 0. Uh, e to the 0 is 1, 16 plus c. So c is equal to x0 minus uh, 16. Right. So my final trajectory after all is said and done is equal to, and I'm going to group them in, in terms of uh, uh, their powers of time, x minus 16 plus 4 plus v0 t plus 5 t squared minus one third t cubed plus 16 e to the minus t over 4. All right, well, that's a lot of numbers, but it gives us a lot of practice. That's not, that's not too bad. Okay, so there is using antiderivatives to get from uh, acceleration functions of time to calculate the velocity as a function of time to the position as a function of time. I, I want to look at one more thing here, or in this case, uh, what I want to do is use the same process to describe uh, changes in uh, position and velocity. For example, if I want to calculate the displacement, I've, I've got, instead of a function of time, I have two specific points in time, and I want to know the change in position or the change in velocity. So in this case, if I'm looking for a delta x, a change in position given two specific uh, t initial and t final, so I want to know the difference between x final and x initial. This is now the definite integral, t initial to t final of the velocity function, d dt. And in this, by the same token, if I want to know a change in velocity for two specific points in time, v final minus v initial. This is now the definite integral initial to t final of the acceleration as a function of time. Now th this is not, of course, what's the important thing is, is, you, is the important relationship to remember is that the, the changes in position and velocity are definite integrals of the respective velocity or acceleration between any two points in time. And then whether it's an x component or a y component or whether it's a one dimensional or a vector, all of these e equations have the same form. So it's important not to, rem to memorize the uh, equations again, but to memorize the relationships uh, in words that you can then represent mathematically any way you would like. And so changes are now def uh, definite integrals. So let's uh, do that. Let's take a look at if I have uh, velocity as a function of time. Let's give ourselves a simple polynomial 5 plus 8t. And I want to know uh, what is change in position in position between two and three seconds. So I want to know the change in position between t is equal to two and t is equal to three seconds. Okay, so that change in position, delta x, is now the definite integral between two and three of our velocity function, which is five plus 
8t dt. Okay. So again, to do that I have to come up with the indefinite integral to that, which is 5t plus 8t is going to be 4t squared evaluated between 2 and 3 using my standard notation. So now I substitute in 3 for t, and so that's 15 plus 3 into t squared is 9 times 4 is 36. That's putting in 3, and this is subtracting when I substitute 2 into that, which is 10 plus 2 squared is 4, times 4 is 16. So this is uh, 51 minus 26, and so my change in position, eventually I can calculate 25 meters. Okay, so let's do one more uh, for practice. Let's go back and grab from a previous module this vector function v, which is equal to 6t squared plus 5 i hat plus 2 sine 2 pi t j hat. And I want to evaluate the change in position uh, from t is equal to 1 uh, to t is equal to 2. So between 1 and 2 seconds, I want to calculate uh, the change in position delta x. Okay, so I'm going to do everything in, uh, in, in vector form now. Give myself a new color for my position. So my position is going to be the definite integral from 1 to 2 of this entire thing. And so uh, I'll put that in here. 6t squared plus 5 i hat plus 2 sine 2 pi t j hat d t. Okay, so this, this whole thing right here is v of t. It's just this thing, and now I want to integrate it. And so uh, this is not too bad. All you have to do is just keep everything separate the, and use your standard rules of the distributive property for the integration. So this is going to be equal to, from 1 to 2, 6t squared plus 5 dt, and I'm going to pull out my i hat, there's an i hat here, and I'm going to pull it out of my integral, because it's a constant, I can do that, there's nothing wrong with that. And so then my other integral, from 1 to 2, of 2 sine 2 pi dt, and this is times j hat, pull that out of my integral, because it's a constant. And so now I just have these uh, standard uh, integrals I have to, to do antiderivatives of. And so as long as I keep everything, so I don't mix my components, make sure I keep my components separate. So this is now 2t cubed plus 5t evaluated between 1 and 2 plus now this j hat the antiderivative we had before, minus 1 over pi cosine 2 pi t, evaluated between 1 and 2. And I plug this in, and I get this is uh, 2. 2 cubed is 8, times 2 is 16, plus 10, 2 times 5, minus 1 times 2 is 2, minus 1 times 5 is 5, plus j. So if I put in 2, cosine of 4 pi is 1, so that's minus 1 over pi 
minus, if I put in 1, cosine of 2 pi times 1 is also 1, so that's minus 1 over pi. This then is 0. So my final displacement is 19 meters in the i direction. So again, it's not more complicated than the scalar part. As long as you keep the vector separate and you have twice as much algebra, but the methodology is the same.